Okay, this is really cool. Hey everybody, I'm gonna ask that you indulge me in a little bit of speculation here. What I'm about to share is entirely my own opinion. Um, this is not based on any kind of insider information from Epic. Everything that I'm about to show is based on information that has been publicly shared by Epic, but maybe not so much promoted and marketed. So what we're looking at here is ostensibly what could be a future version of Unreal Engine, uh, maybe a very close future version of Unreal Engine. This is a compiled code base that's shared by Epic on GitHub. So this is the UE5 main branch that is uh, shared publicly. So if you connect your Epic Games account to your GitHub account, you can go onto the Unreal Engine repository, go to the uh, UE5 main branch, and under code, you can uh, download a zip file of all the code and compile it yourself on your own computer. Uh, this particular branch is the one that is the latest and greatest version of the work that's being done at Epic. It's not guaranteed to actually function, but it is uh, you know, a dynamic code base. In fact, if we look closely here, the latest commit on this particular branch was about three hours ago at the time that I'm recording this, and this is on April 28th. So we're still a little over a month away from Unreal Fest and State of Unreal. Uh, we're expecting to maybe hopefully see version 5.6 come out then. Uh, which also means for the moment, you know, maybe we'll see a preview version soon. Um, again, all of this is speculation on my part. I don't have any special insider information from Epic. Uh, but looking at these commits, by the way, there is an MH SDK, MetaHuman SDK, maybe. Uh, UEMHC, Unreal Engine MetaHuman Creator, maybe. Uh, so you can, you know, go to this site and, and read through the commit logs all you like and see all the changes that are getting posted there. Uh, one of the interesting things is that I've been downloading this code base for the last few months and building it and looking at what's coming to be ready for it. And uh, just in the last few days, the version has rolled over. So it generally compiles and says, that it's version 5.6, but it's now showing uh, that it's version 5.7. And again, speculation on my part, but that often means that they're getting ready to start doing pre-releases and releases of Unreal 5.6. And we already know the hints have been coming from Epic about 5.6, probably maybe coming at Unreal Fest and the state of Unreal talk that's going to happen there. So uh, again, the primary source on this will be Unreal Fest itself. Uh, there is, if you search for Unreal Fest or 2025, you'll see that it's in Orlando, June 2 to 5. You can still get tickets and you can check out the agenda. Now, uh, full disclosure, I am involved in the event. I'm delivering a uh, lab presentation for the motion design side of things. I am not involved in the MetaHuman side of things. Again, this is just personally outside speculation on here. And uh, nothing that I'm sharing today has been something that I, I'm being in any way uh, sponsored for. Um, just it happens to be that I'm presenting a lab at the this event. So I am involved, and that's the full disclosure side of things. But again, uh, on the flip side of that, none of what I'm sharing has been authorized or shared by Epic themselves. This is just my opinion. Uh, but I can say, uh, you know, while I'm going, there are 2,800 other reasons to go to this event, uh, not to mention almost 200 other sessions. I have to say that whether or not I was presenting, I would be going to this event because of how important Unreal Engine is to my own work, uh, just to meet up with all of these folks and uh, see these sessions. So um, that is my spiel on Unreal Fest itself. Um, looking at Unreal Fest, we actually see a bit more than we do in the public-facing roadmap. So you can Google the Unreal Engine public roadmap. And in forward-looking, if we do Control F and look for MetaHuman, yeah, um, zero, nothing found with Meta H. So there's nothing being talked about here. But if we go into this agenda and we search for MetaHuman here, 
what we're going to see is over a dozen sessions related to metahumans and performance capture. Having gone to several previous Unreal Fests before, I have never seen this many sessions specifically on metahumans. And so that's got me excited. And so I figured I'd go ahead and uh, build this set of code and show that uh, in here, there are a bunch of new plugins related to metahumans. So we have metahuman animator we've had for a while. Uh, but what is new is metahuman creator, metahuman core tech, and uh, there's a metahuman SDK. I think we've had that before, uh, but this metahuman runtime and uh, metahuman live link, metahuman creator, Cortec, these are new. And so this is what I think I'm looking at here. I mean, honestly, I I don't even know how to use this. I managed to fumble through getting my own MetaHuman into this interface by using this uh, Create Mesh from DNA button. That ended up generating a skeletal mesh from DNA on a uh, MetaHuman I created of myself in a uh, previous version of Unreal using 5.5 .5 and a scan, um, but we can see here that in theory we should be able to drag and drop other models in here. Now, eh, you know, again, my compile, this isn't working. Maybe this will be working soon. Uh, but we do have the ability to, you know, kind of manipulate the model as we would in the web version of MetaHuman Creator. So that is really cool. Um, we have the ability to conform and maybe load in an existing model. Uh, and this actually, I think, is how I downloaded my, uh, or imported my uh, MetaHuman DNA file. The other thing that's really crazy, really crazy, is that there's a whole body section. Uh, typically, we only have a few bodies to choose from, but here I can go to a model button, and now I can actually make adjustments to this MetaHuman body right here in MetaHuman Creator. So, um, you know, maybe a little bit embarrassing here, but, you know, I can adjust shoulder size, I can adjust height, uh, there's a body type dialing, uh, muscularity, yeah, I'm not that muscular, so I need to dial that back. Probably Probably add a good bit of fat to that. Um, waist adjustments, you know, you know, their chest size, all in uh, measurements. So this is <laughs> super cool, and and this goes down the entire body. Uh, so this is all brand new. Um, also in uh, the head, uh, we have uh, basically everything that we might expect. But under materials, if we go to uh, skin, uh, there is our skin settings in here. Here. Uh, and in addition to skin tone, we have a lot of uh, texture indexes. In the past, I think there were only maybe a, a few dozen options here uh, with the, the face texture in terms of the, uh, the skin texture, but now it looks like there's over 150 of those. So quite a few more available. I think I was using number uh, 79 before, and then, you know, maybe it's me. I don't know. It's kind of kind of close. Um, there is also a hair and clothing section here. Uh, in a previous version, I saw this being listed as a wardrobe, but um, you know, here it's it's some it's called hair and clothing. So there are a lot of adjustments and a lot of changes coming, and so this is really really exciting. Uh, the other thing that's near and dear to my heart is performance capture. I teach a lot of motion capture. I do quite a lot of motion capture work. We have a Vicon system, an OptiTrack system. Uh, we of course use. Live link face and if I go to um, take a look at some of the other things that are new here let me go back to the uh, plugins and type in the word capture uh, one of the things that I saw in here is new modules, new plugins for performance capture. There's performance capture core and performance capture workflow. So uh, looking deeper into those, I've created this set of assets right here. And what it looks like we can do is create data assets for, uh, in this case, this is a character. And this character has a, a performer source and a skeletal mesh, IK rig and retargeter. So the kinds of things that we might expect to need if we were retargeting performance capture live onto a skeletal mesh. And it looks like we 
can set all of that up here without needing to dig deep into blueprints. Uh, when it comes to performer data, here is uh, some interesting things where we can not only have a base skeleton for the character, which, you know, if this was a Vicon performer, there's a Vicon base skeleton, but maybe there's a proportioned mesh skeleton as well. So we could actually have separate proportioned skeletal meshes for each individual performer, which is really exciting. And then there is uh, prop data and then session information where we can identify a production name. And then there's tables as well. So I'm seeing that uh, there's a production table and then a session table where we can you know, create multiple sessions, let's say morning and afternoon. Uh, we can create a table of slates and designate uh, whether it's complete or we're skipping it incomplete. So it looks like a whole new set of functionality. And if I remember correctly, under tools, let's go and take a look at Live Link Hub. So here's our Live Link Hub where we have our Live Link sources. Now, this is an independent application from the Unreal Engine editor itself. So it looks like we'll be able to utilize all this performance capture data in Live Link Hub to manage motion capture, performance capture. So, again, all of this is speculation on my part. It, all of it is opinion on my personal part. None of this comes directly from Epic Games. I am definitely a secondhand source on this, but I did share with you my primary sources, which are all Epic Games based. So again, some of those are uh, the commit logs and the uh, UE5 main branch of the engine code base itself. Uh, some of this is in the forward looking uh, roadmap. Nothing on metahumans, but if we go into uh, live, the live capture workflow is being managed by Richard Graham. And so the blurb in here is talking about the uh, focus that they have on live motion and performance capture. So there is a lot going on in here. I'm also looking forward to some of the features in uh, the animation and uh, sequencer. So let's see if we type in animation. Uh, character animation. There's going to be uh, better ways of filtering our, our different controls and uh, skeletons here. I'm looking forward to these features being able to help us in blending um, performance capture data with audio capture data. Uh, so there's lots going on. So hopefully in the next few weeks, uh, maybe we get to see a preview ahead of Unreal Fest. Uh, but clearly, the state of Unreal at Unreal Fest in Orlando is going to be the main event. So if you are going to Unreal Fest, um, be sure to look out for me. I will be at the keynote on uh, Tuesday, of course. And I did notice, uh, speaking of Richard Graham, if I type in MediHuman on Tuesday, it looks like Richard has a state of performance capture in Unreal at 11.30 on Tuesday, which is really the first session after the state of Unreal. So I'll definitely be there, and hopefully a lot of my other MediHuman enthusiast friends and uh, performance capture friends will uh, be there to run into. So thank you for indulging me as I went down this rabbit hole of speculation and opinion. I hope this was of some use, and I hope I get to see some of you at Unreal Fest in a few weeks. Until next time, have fun.